I felt like the review didn't have a lot of questions on constant proportionality, so I'm adding this one. Okay. Um, yeah, that's it. Is it proportional? Well, you can find k, the constant proportionality. So k equals y over x. You can find it over each one. 5 divided by 1 is 5. 10 divided by 2 is 5. 15 divided by 3 is 5. 20 divided by 4 is 5. Right? So k is 5. It is proportional. Therefore, the equation equals 5, y equals 5x. And remember, it's 5x plus 0, but we don't write the 0 because it's pointless. And the graph would look something like this. Okay. She uses 845 calories working out in two and one seven hours. How many calories does she use for an hour? So again, and 45 to one seventh hours. And we want to find out how many calories she loses in one hour or per hour. Now, reason, so you have a calculator at your disposal. So you can just go and divide by 2 over 1 7 and divide by 2 and 1 7. Okay, you don't need to change it to the reciprocal. So if you change the reciprocal, it would look like this. Calories over 15 over 7. Hours, right? So and you would multiply by 7 over 15 and multiply by 7 over 15 and you would get your answer. So either way you do it, because you have a calculator, really doesn't matter. So um, 845, sorry, you're either dividing 845 by 2 and 1 7 or multiplying it by 7 over 15. Whichever one you want, it will give you the same exact answer. So I'm just going to pick the easiest thing to enter in the calculator. And I'm going to get simp 394 calories, about 394 and one third calories in an hour, which is not bad at all. Okay. Which I should have done today. Find the equation of the line. I know the equation of the line. Explain. So here, I know that the what's is that we're going by five. Yeah. So that's twenty-five. So I know B. So if I have this, is something blank plus the y-intercept, which is fifteen. No, sorry, 25, right? That, so that line crosses the y-axis 25. So I have to let y-intercept, and I'm missing my slope. So to find a slope, I take y2 minus y1, x2 minus x1. So I need two points. So let's pick two easy points. So the first point I'm going to pick is 0 and 25, right there. And the second point I'm going to pick is I'm just going to make 1 and 30. So these two points. Let's call these two x2, y2. Let's call this x1, y1. 25 minus 30 is 5. x minus 1 is uh, 1 minus 0 is 1. So m equals 5. So, ta da! 5x plus 25. Which table represents proportional? Again, you can just go and do what do you call? Find a constant proportionality. Uh, let's see, 16 divided by 8 is 2, 36 divided by 9 is 4. Well, this is definitely, you know, just by looking at it, this is definitely a no. All right, this is a yes because there is my origin. Let's start going through the origin. And 1 times negative 1.5, 2 times negative 1.5 is 3, and 3 times negative 1.5 is negative 4.5. Definitely. And you can talk about that, and you explain, and you can also go, I found the constant proportionality for each, for, you know, all these points. And the constant proportionality was negative 1.5, right? Negative 1.5. Um, yeah, keep it simple, and complicated. For any equilateral polygon, is the length side of the, is the, is the length of the side proportional to the perimeter? So, let's pick a triangle. Equilateral. First of all, they all sides have to measure the same. This is two, this is two, and this is two. Think about the perimeter is going to be what? Three times, uh, what do you call it? The side, 3s. 
right? So if, if the side is two, right, the perimeter is going to be six. If the side is four, so imagine this was four, four, be three times four, which is going to give you 12. So you can see that it's times three, times three relationship, right? So let's pick a, um, uh, a shape I can draw. One, one, two, three, zero, five, six, seven, eight, a hexagon, so six sides. So imagine if they're equilateral, and let's say I called each side is five. Each side is measure five, that measures five, that measures five, that measures five, that measures five, and that measures five. So the perimeter is going to be six times whatever the side is. So if the side is 5, the perimeter is going to be 30. Oops, why did I write it like that? If the side is 5, the perimeter is 30 because it's times 6. If the side is 4, right, if the side was 4, we did 4 times 6, which gives you 24. If the side was 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9, 9 times 6, we would get 54. Notice that it's times 6, times 6, times 6, obviously proportional so if we were to graph this okay if we were to graph this and this is the side and this is the perimeter so let's take it let's uh, the hexagon when the side is one the perimeter would be six when the side is two the perimeter would be I'll just write over here 12 when the side is three the perimeter would be 18 right should be a straight line. Okay. In this case, y equals 6x, or p equals 6s, where p is the y and s is the x. Six, write the equation of the line. Okay, by now you have to be really tired of these. The equation line, well, you can use this if you like, pick a point. Well, it is proportional, first of all. Make sure it's proportional. Uh, pick a point that you can see, and this looks like point 200 and 100. Right? So if we do k y over x, it's 100 over 200, and k is a half. So the equation of the line would be 1 half x or 0 0.5x, whatever you choose. I would prefer half x, by the way. Uh, let's see, what's the constant proportionality based on this? I'm write an equation, 45 earn, uh, for, she works 45 hours to earn $832.55 and 50 cents. So this is my dependent, because the total depends on the hours that you work. So that makes this the independent value, right? So this is, in other words, this is your X, and this is your Y. So based on that, I can find the constant proportionality. Five divided by 45 and k equals our idea. 32.5 divided by 45, and that is 18.5 or 18 and a half. So the equation of lines 18.5x. Okay. Takes Mr. Cho seven eighths of an hour to write one and three fifth pages of math review. Yeah, pretty accurate. What does he do in one hour? So we want the unit rate in one hour. How many pages of review? Yeah, you guys think these pages just pop out of thin air? It does not. So the actual rate that's given to us is one and three fifth pages and seven eighth of an hour. Let's change that to unit rate. Oh. Multiply that by 8 over 7, multiply the top by 8 over 7. So in one hour, how much do I get done? Sometimes it's even more than that. 1 and 3 fifths times 8 over 7, and we get 1 and 29 over 35, so almost two pages. Not almost two pages. Okay. Yeah, almost two pages. Close. What's the constant proportionality? Okay, write an equation. So again, pick a point. A point you can see. Uh, 
an exact point. An exact point with this for me would be this point. It's right in the intersection. So I'm just gonna right. So if you look at it, it's right there. So this would be five and two. So that would be the point five two. K equals y over x, which is two over five. And I'm gonna leave it as that. No need to change to a decimal. And my equation is y equals two fifths x. And what's the better buy? Uh, so what's the difference between the two sides per ounce? Okay, so ninety-six cents for twelve ounces, which means one ounce is gonna cost me. You have no idea. Divide both sides by twelve. Okay, 0 0.96 divided by 12 equals 8 cents. The second one is a dollar 12, and I get 16 ounces. Divide by 16, divide by 16. So one ounce, 1.112 divided by 16, 7 cents. But what's the difference between the two sizes in cost? Well, there you go, one cent. There is a proportional relationship between a person's mass on Earth to the mass on the moon. So your weight here and your weight on the moon. The table shows the two persons' mass on Earth compared to the mass on the moon. If Jerry's weight is 13.6 on the moon, what is his mass? on earth okay so let's figure out what the you know can we figure that out 78.5 times what becomes that top well let's go the other way because it's probably easier so, let's go this way times something Times something, times something, right? So if, even if I put, all right, so let's go that way. So 12.56 times what equals 78.5? Well, so I'm gonna divide 78.5 divided by 12.56 and I get 6.25. So let's confirm that with the second one, Mark. If I multiply 15.68, times 6.25, would that give me 98 pounds? And it does. So likewise here, for Jerry, 13.6 times, uh, what is it, 6.25, it's going to give me, so Jerry on Earth is gonna weigh 85 pounds. Does the graph represent a proportional relationship? Yes, it does. It goes through the origin. Okay, so I'm not going to write that. What is this cost for 200? So, what is the cost for 225 square feet of carpet? Well, there's 70 feet, 80 feet, 90 feet, 100, and 225 would be about here. And that graph would be all the way up there. So, but because the graph doesn't go all the way up there, we're probably better using our, um, an equation. So, let's find the equation of this thing over here. Um, let's pick a point, and here's a nice point, 20, 30. So k equals y over x, which would be 30 over 20. Simplify, I'm just going to leave it like this. So my equation on the line, y equals 3 over 2 x. Now, they're asking us when x, right, the square feet, when x is 225, which is about here, I'm just making that up so I can go around, which is about here, what would be this value right here, right? The cost. So I'm looking for y. So y equals three over two times x. That's two twenty-five. So y, which represents the cost in dollars, 
would be 225 times 1.5. Oops, 225 times 1.5. I changed it to be in half. And y equals 337. So, if this graph continued, they would meet a 0.225 and the y value would be 335.5. And that's the point where they would meet. Okay? That's probably the easier way of you finding. Okay. Okay, next one. J, what? Junior high school. 15 pi's. Find the equation to represent the relationship again. Okay. So we have, again, this is y and this is x. So 221.25 15 pi's. So 1 pi. I get my unit rate. Or you can do divide by 15, top and bottom, 221.25. Divided by 15 equals 14.75. That's my unit rate. And if I might, if I know my unit rate, guess what? I also know my constant proportionality. And if I know my constant proportionality, I also know my equation. There. Okay. He can type two fifths of a page in 12 minutes. How much can he type in one hour? All right. So in one hour, well, how do I get 12 minutes to become an hour and multiply by 5? Because if I multiply 12 by 5, I get 60, and 60 is the same thing as an hour. So times 5, and 2 fifths times 5 is just simply 2 pages. Okay, so moving. 15. Organic apple sell for 285 per pound. So guess what? This is already my unit rate. Okay, and I k equals 2.85, and I can also write my equation, which is y equals 2.85x. But the problem here, they want me to write the equation to find c, the total cost, and p, the pounds of apple. So the total cost is my y. And I'm going to change that to C. And 285, instead of multiplying by X, we're going to multiply by P, which is the number of pounds. So it's the same thing, except with using the letters that represent the words in this question. Okay. 16. Y O equals 1 over 2X would pass through what? two points. What two points? Well, think about it. If it's proportional, right? So again, just by looking at the equation, I know it's going to be proportional. So, is it going to go... Well, you don't have too many choices, right? So you're either going to go through, let's see, AD. Can you go through AD? Well, remember what I told you, right? This. One thing you can do is y equals 1 over x plus 0. So you know this is the equation of the line to, be, to begin with. And this represents the slope. So if you remember the rise over run, so we have a point. I, there's a line here, right? There's a line here. I don't know if it's this line, this line, or that line, but there's a line there. And it goes through 0, 0. So I know one of the points is 0. So as long as you have one point, I can use this information to go to my next point. Well, 1 over 2 means 1 up to the right. I know, well, first of all, oh, not first of all, but also things I know about my slope. It's a positive slope, so it's going to go up that way. So if I have a point and, wanna, and I want to get to one of the next points, I do what? I go 1 up and 2 to the right. So 1 up, 2 to the right. 1 up, 2 to the right. So from 0, 0, which was a point on the line, I would go 1 up to the right. So, based on that, this line here is a line that goes like this. OK. 
Okay. There you go. There is your line y equals half x. Seventeen. Identify two points in line. Explain what they mean. The context of the problem. Find k. Unit rate. Which. Okay. Um, all right, let's find two points. Uh, okay, there's a point here. Three, four. Uh, there's an exact point here, which is, uh, what is it, six, nine? So that's three, four, yeah. This, this is six, eight, by the way. So in context of the story, it says in three days, Right in three days, the what? The flood rises how many inches? Four inches. Rises four inches. In six days, the flood rises eight inches. Okay, so that's what in the context of that story means. Okay, K. I'll pick a point. Let's just pick three, four. Y over x. So we're gonna get four thirds. So k equals four thirds. Um, what's the unit rate? So the unit rate is one day and number of inches on top. And once you have k, so we can say that. Every day we have four, th four over three inches or better, if you want to write it as one and one third in inches of rising flood water per day. Okay, why is better if you use one and one third? Okay, so that becomes this written as a mixed number. And what point represents the unit break? Well, the point that represents the unit break would be one, right? This point and one and one third which is right about here, and if you look at it, sort of, like we couldn't tell it was one and one third, but we knew it was one and something a little bit bigger than one on the y-axis. Okay, at this point, it might be All right, that should be, that should help you.